some other changes here to Lingering Souls, uh, where our last player uh, did not have any Lingering Souls in his main deck. You're also going to find two copies of main deck Garrick Relentless. No main deck copies of Acidic Slime, a card that's kind of gone back and forth in and out as far as if people want to play it in their main deck or not. It's actually gone from Nestico's list. So you're going to see a different take on it. Um, it also does have three copies of Farsuit to go along with for Absence Pilgrim, so no Arbor Elves here either. But Absence Pilgrim on turn one is going to show up as Doom Traveler is going to come across here for Costner and knock Nestico down to 19. And this is going to be an interesting matchup because generally you would think uh, Nestico should have the advantage simply because Junk Tokens probably can't put up enough pressure. But once you start casting Leering Souls and you can get Soren uh, to start ticking down to give you those emblems, um, you'd be surprised at how, how much damage Junk Tokens can sort of uh, ramp up to. So, so Farseek here from Nestico, gonna put a Goblet Shrine into play. It looks like he probably has another land to follow that up with as well. So accelerating quite well. As we'll find out more about these players here. Mark Nestico is from Estero, Florida. He is your current Florida State champion. A couple PTQ top eights as well. And he does have a big smiley face because he does write for Star City Games. Good use of the smiley face, Mark. <laughs> Appreciate you. And uh, Farseek, turn to Farseek from Reanimator is something that we, uh, Jerry Thompson sort of um, made popular. He wrote an article a couple of weeks ago about how it's probably just a better ramp spell than Arbor Elf because it can smooth your mana and it's not vulnerable to some of the removal that you're seeing out there. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty big deal where, you know, as you said, it, it, it smooths your mana, it makes it so that you can't be lit up by removal. I think that's the big thing is when people were playing 8 Accelerants, and you see a Thraxus here from Nestigo, going to push his life total up to 23. Um, when people were playing 8 Accelerants, people move towards cards like Bonfire the Damn, like Trickery, yep. um, is a Static Caster to control those Man Accelerants, and if you're able to control those, then, then the Junk Reanimator deck actually has to play a, a very fair game. I actually have to hit their land drops or hit well with Mulches or find lands with Grizzly Salvage instead of an awesome card, and that was a way to just really slow them down and be able to kill them in time. But if you go towards Farseek and only 4 Man Accelerants, you don't open yourself up to those kind of wonky or kind of poor ways to lose a game that you yeah. can you can avoid otherwise. I you know I think Pilgrim you still want to play that just because it does give you the white mana that you sometimes need in the deck. Um, so having so you're still having eight accelerants, but uh, you know they can get you all the color mana. Whereas Arbel sometimes you can't even actually it doesn't actually count as a ramp. Yeah. Sometimes you might just have like some petal growth. So. Uh, Kelly, unfortunately, does not have the Lingering Souls and doesn't, doesn't even have a Planeswalker to follow up here, so um, we're going to see a block here. Just uh, get a token with Doom Traveler. Traveler is doomed indeed. Could not block fast enough, so there's your spirit <laughs> token. So Nestico has just a Thrag Tusk right now, but it looks like he also has an Inverio right in his hand, as well as a Vault of Archangel, which is a card that is great in Kelly's deck, but also pretty good in Nestico's deck as well. Yeah, these value lands uh, that we've seen from Innistrad block, you know, Vault of the Archangels is an incredible one, but, you know, there's an opportunity cost associated with that card because it taps for colorless mana. If your mana is online, you can activate this thing every turn, either offensively or defensively. This card is completely insane, but it can mess with your lands if you do draw it on the opening turns of the game, make it so that you can't cast some of your spells. And at the end of the day, this is a colorless land, a three-color deck. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's a gamble, but I think it, it's, it's just a powerful effect. It's such a powerful effect and can really swing the game in your favor that it's worth playing at least one copy, maybe board in a second. Here we see Kelly play a Thraktus, Thraktus of his own, and it looks like we're going to see a swing with the Angel uh, Spirit Token. or Nope. Oh, looks like he's afraid of uh, Restoration Angel there, so just decides to pass. I think that's a I think that's a fair thing to be scared of when your opponent is representing that much mana and played it and played a vault and did not like he didn't play vault pre combat and activate it on his attack which is something he could have done. Now he is at least representing restoration. It doesn't mean that he has it, but he's certainly representing it. But I, I that that's kind of that's still why I think Kelly should have attacked there because I don't think your spirit token is doing much for you right now in defense. Whereas if you attack, yeah, he might have a restoration angel, but at least you get information from him. Plus. If he has Restoration Angel on his Thraktus, you're in pretty bad shape either way. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Spirit's really going to be helping you. So if you attack there, at least, you know, if Mark doesn't have the Restoration Angel, you gain advantage, you gain information, and you attack for one, and it allows you to play your next turns accordingly. So um, I think I still would have attacked there with Kelly. For, uh, because, it's, you know, again, it's just just one Spirit token. So we see Thraktus trades in combat with another Thraktus. Beast tokens are going to come into play. Pikachu 
playing a beast token impersonation for right now and then in the barrel rights is going to bring back a Thrag Tusk here for Nestico. So a small little graveyard engine coming online here, but one thing you see among Ooh. Nestico's lands, you see both players have multi Archangels now, is that Nestico is at the requisite seven mana, and we're almost in Angel of Serenity territory yeah. now. And yeah, with the with the Avacyn Pilgrim, Mark can basically cast any Angel of Serenity he draws. He also has the Unburial Rights in his graveyard still that he could flash back, so he's in pretty good shape. Even a Grizzly Savage or a Mulch here, would would give him um, their requisite card advantage he needs probably to dig for that other threat. Kelly really needs some pressure in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, a Lingering Souls would be a good draw, but on top of that, he also probably needs a, a Soren. Um, beyond that, he really doesn't have enough pressure. Mark's gummed up the ground pretty well. He has also got a Vault of Archangel to pump up his life. So you really kind of need to attack uh, Reanimator in the air if you're Junk Tokens here. Looks like he does have another Thrag Tusk to gum up the board a little more and give himself some time to draw those cards. Yeah, but if you are if you are a junk reanimator, as you're so going to see... Oh, looks so like he's, he's using brawls, brawls yep. to go up in the air, which is a, a smart move here, because again, Kelly knows the best way for me to win this game is just to go through the air. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you're a junk reanimator, you're so good at gumming up the ground. And junk, what junk reanimator often does is it gums up the ground and then just wins in the air with, yep. you know, Restoration Angel or Angel of Serenity or what have you. Um, but, you know, it coming up the ground gives it time to draw to those cards that you mentioned, be it Mulch, be it Grizzly Savage, be it Angel of Serenity, be able to clear the way for those ground guys to be able to get through. Mm -hmm. So if you're Kelly, you want to try to get this game over with as fast as you can. Yeah. Because I think the draw steps here favor Nestico more than they do for Costner. Yes, definitely. And, uh, you know, it, as, that was a pretty solid play by Kelly. Unfortunately, Mark does have a Fiend Hunter, it appears. So it doesn't look like that token's going to be um, too much of a factor for much longer. And now we have Mark swinging with both the Thrag Tusk and the Thrag Tusk token. And uh, Kelly's Thrag Tusk token, Beast token, will trade with Mark Nestico's Thrag Tusk, <laughs> bringing him another Pikachu Beast token into play. Uh, and yes. dropping Kelly down to 17. The classic Pikachu Beast token. <laughs> Always here. They look like they're foil, too. And I, don't, I don't know much about the old Pokemon card game, but those do look like foil Foil of Pikachus. Pikachus. So it looks like, yes, it looks like we will see Keen Hunter enter play, taking out the Spirit Token. And uh, looks like we have access to four mana, and could we be seeing Thragtus getting on Burial Rise? Okay, so they are replaced by Liz Nugent Tokens. Okay. <laughs> Turtle Power. And it looks like Flashback and Burial Rise on a Thragtus. So solid board presence here by Mark. I believe one of those Beast Tokens is tapped. So. So it looks like we're trying to break the record for uh, number of Thractos cast in the yeah. map, or number of Thractos put into play. I look like we're at four right now. So let's see. It looks like we have a lot less troll drawn by Kelly. Again, not exactly what you want here. It's going to give him some protection on the ground. But again, in order to push this game through, he's going to need some flyers. He really needs the Lingering Souls here. Even a... So uh, even a Sigarda would be pretty solid. Yeah. Because you wouldn't be able to, you can't get targeted. But again, he only has one copy of Sigarda in his deck. So Thraxus number 800 has shown up. <laughs> See a Lotless Troll, also a Goblet Shrine in hand as well. I'm going to pass the turn back. It looks like, oh, uh, we're going to do some Scavenger. All right, so yep. we're going to make that uh, Varos into a 3-3. Three, three. Well, Lotless would be pretty interesting because the Trample effect is another way you could potentially push through. Mm -hmm. So if that Thraktus dies, which we expect it will, yep. he can scavenge it onto the Lotless Troll and make it a real threat. So here's the big draw here for Nestico. It's a Grizzly Savage. He's gonna turn over five cards. He's gonna do a nice job of keeping it off camera, Ooh. but there is an Angel Strain that's going to yep. hand. Obzidak going in the graveyard, along with the Lingering Soul. So he has found exactly what he's looking for, has the necessary lands to actually cast Angel Strain and clear some things out of the way now. And so, yeah. get the engine online. Obzidat gets targeted, Fiend Hunter gets targeted, along with... Oh, no, looks like he's just going to take out the correct test. Yeah, leave him with a 3-3 three, three beast yeah. and start to just push through some damage. Which I like this play. Let's, you know, he wants to clear up things, does Nestico, and let's just get this game over with. Because, yeah. you know, I don't think he has a very good idea of what he's playing against, because there's no real deck right now that's super popular that has this composition of cards. You know, when you're playing it's like Varls and Doom Travel, you can think Junk Aristocrats, but now there's a threat that's just kind of thing, some, throwing some things off. So I don't think he has a, a great idea of what he's playing against. So if I'm Nestic on the situation, I kind of just want to clear through board and just get the game over with. Yeah, you, you don't really know what's, what's going on here. I think originally he thought about bringing back an OBS out, getting out of the Varls, and taking out my Fiend Hunter too. But uh, this play, you know, you're going to leave him just with a token, which will probably get traded to combat right now. Yeah. 
and then you still have a 5 6 flyer that Kelly has to contend with. That's right. Even Fiend Hunter is going to get into the red zone here, which I love. You know, if he's going to, if he wants to take his turn to take 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11 points of damage, Costner, he can move himself down to 14 to take care of a Fiend Hunter. I think if you're Nestico, you're thrilled with that. Well, the only the only drawback to that is is that the Fiend Hunter is an even better threat next turn when you can activate your Vault of Archangel because sure. it guarantees to kill anything. That's but, true. you know, I agree with you. You're, you're basically just trading two damage. I think you still probably block the Fiend Hunter here, though. Because you have at least two blockers in your hand. Let's see what he does. So it looks like he's just going to trade with a Thractus. Okay. Soak up five damage. Take seven. Nestico's left with another 3-3. Three, three. So drops Kelly to 18. And he has 15 damage on the board, threatening uh, threatening to do 15 with his attackers next turn. And potentially gain 15. Like and potentially gain 15. Yeah. Which is scary in and of itself. So, let's see what you have. Uh, looks like it just, it looks like that Lothar troll is really the only action that Kelly has. So Nestico is going to break the ice with a little icebreaker, <laughs> put that back in there. Mark, I'll take one. I don't mind. There's a lot of troll that's going to come into play here. Let's see what the follow-up's going to be. It's going to be another Varal's Discard Stripe. And it looks like if he has a creature to discard to the lot of troll, at least he can block and start trading with the tokens. Yeah. Uh, and regenerate his lot of troll. He can, if Mark can blank on a couple of threats, then Kelly might be able to pull this out. He's still going to need to top deck, though. And even the absent build, absent build coming from the trees, <laughs> coming out from the mana base to get in. So let's see. He could potentially block. Lot Latrol can block a beast. Morales can block maybe. So he does have. Ooh, Restoration Angel. So we have a block and regenerate. Is Avacyn Pilgrim getting blocked as well? Or is Morales just not blocking anything? I think Morales might be being a bit of a coward here just because of Vault of the, Arch Vault of the Archangels. No real interest in blocking. But we're going to see a huge change in life after this combat is over. You'll see a beast token bite the dust as well. Okay, so Varal's going to get bigger next turn. Hopefully, if Kelly if Kelly can draw uh, Lingering Souls here, he's still in reasonable shape. Yeah, that would certainly help right now. You know, he's not in great shape. Yeah. But <laughs> at least he'll have two regenerators on the board that could be fairly large. So let's see which draw we have here from Kelly. Doom Traveler would be a decent draw as well. Yeah, gives him a ones. gives him a flyer, puts a regeneration shield on Varals, and he can he can still make Varals uh, a uh, six six by removing the Restoration Angel. That's go sitting at forty three. Costner at five. Costner takes his draw for the turn. Organizing his lands a little bit here, maybe thinking we're going to have a little bit of a battle, yep. but we are not, so Costner is going to concede, and Mark Nesco is going to win game number one, Junk Reanimator, up a game over Junk Tokens. Yeah, and again, it was kind of what we talked about earlier. Kelly uh, just couldn't put enough pressure. Junk Tokens, it's definitely good at gumming up the board, mm -hmm. but just wasn't able to get enough pressure on the board, and the one flyer he did have that was uh, a significant threat, Mark had the Fiend Hunter to deal with. So we're going to take a look at the sideboards here. We're going to go over Kelly Costner's first as he is going to be on the play here for game number two. And he's got a very good idea of what he is playing against. So what do we have here for help for him, Lucy? Uh, so he actually has a pretty good sideboard here. He's got three pure by the graves. So um, I think he kind of suspected that Reanimator is going to be very popular and his matchup probably isn't that great game one. So definitely can see three pure by the grave coming in. Also has two copies of Deathrite Shaman, which is, again, really great card against Reanimator. He's got uh, Putrefy, the, uh, Sever the Bloodline, Appetite for Brains, one of each. I kind of can see those, th all three of those coming in, to be honest. Uh, along with two copies of Curse of Death Hold, uh, two copies of Blood Baron of Biscopa, and two copies of Sin Collector, along with one copy of Abrupt Decay. Um, to be honest, I could see him bringing in a lot of cards. I can sure. see him bringing in the Purify the Grave, the Deathrite Shaman, Putrefy just as a way to deal with Angel Serenity. You know, we saw it uh, in game one. He just doesn't have that many ways to kill Flyers, so... Future Fire is a solid card. Seven of the Bloodline, again, dealing with uh, another way to deal with creatures. Appetite for Brains, I like bringing this card in, especially if you have Graveyard Removal. Yep. Just getting rid of those angels from his hand so he can't cast them later in the game. Yep. I like uh, Curse of Deathhold, a, a little slow, not sure. You, you know, you saw the Lingering Souls that he milled. Not sure you really need Curse of Deathhold in this matchup, though. It's a little too slow to deal with the Man Accelerants. Um, and, and, your, and your tokens are just going to be better than his anyway. 
Sure. So I don't think you need the Curse of Death Hold. I do actually like Blood Baron because there's not really many ways for the Junk Reanimator deck to deal with Blood Baron. Uh, a lot of their removal is Seven of the Bloodline, so, you know, it's a black removal spell. They have maybe a small Garrick as ways to kill creatures, which doesn't affect Blood Baron. They have ways to block with Thrag Tusk and Beast Tokens. But again, if you're bringing in Putrefy and Seven of the Bloodlines and you have two copies of Putrefy in your main deck, you can sort of clear the way uh, of those uh, Thrag Tusks to let your Blood Baron get in. So I actually kind of like Blood Baron in this matchup. So I could see probably bringing in Purify, Deathrite Shaman, Putrefy, Seven Bloodline, Appetite, and two copies of Blood Baron. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards total. Ten, ten cards that are certainly options, which is a pretty good feeling to have. Yeah. Honestly. Where you can definitely tell that Costner has probably built his deck with Junk Reanimator in mind for the sideboard of games. He'd like to turn his matchup around there and see if he can actually pull, pull it out in what is probably a pretty tough game one matchup for him. Yeah, and he doesn't have, he, you know, he has cards that he kind of doesn't need in this matchup. Voice of Resurgence, you probably don't need. Um, Advent of the Worm, it's fine, but I'm not sure if it's better than your sideboard cards. I also don't know if you need uh, Loxanon Smiter or Abrupt Decay or Sin Collector in this matchup. Okay. Sin Collector obviously is great if you can get an Umbarian Rights, but again, Junk Reanimator doesn't play that many spells, so probably want to trim some of those numbers. We're taking a look at Mark Nesico's sideboard now. Three copies of Acidic Slime, three Sin Collectors, one Seven of the Bloodline, one Restoration Angel, two Deathrite Shaman, two Tristani, Celestia's Voice, two Abrupt Decay, and one additional Fiend Hunter for the two in his main deck. Uh, Acidic Slime is one that I think is probably going to come in here because, again, the matchup, how, how game one played, I, how I think this matchup is going to play, is that both players are going to kind of gum things up a little bit on the ground uh, and try to break through in the air. And so if that's the case, Acidic Slime can start to get out of control, blowing up lands. Um, start to blink it with Restoration Angel, bring it back with Unveiler Rights. Also, it can act as basically a 2-2 two unblockable -two creature because I don't think Costner really has any any interest in trading a creature with it. So I think Acidic Slime's going to get a lot of value here in this matchup. Uh, Sin Collector, I, I don't think great here. It's bodies outclassed. Well, I, think, so. I think the fact that it can get rid of Lingering Souls is kind of important. For Sin Collector? If, if, I'm not sure if Mark was able to figure out that Kelly was a Junk Tokens deck or not. Again, we did, he, he saw Thrag Tusk. He saw um, Varls, Vora, um, so maybe he's, he, he still might not be sure. Maybe he's putting him uh, more in Act 2. Okay. But either way, I think Sin Collector is uh, a pretty good card to bring in because, you know, I mentioned a couple times in Game 1, Lingering Souls is one of the key cards that, that uh, Kelly needs in order to kind of push through damage. Okay. Um, so getting rid of Lingering Souls I think is really good. Also, I think a card like Sin Collector is a lot better for Junk Reanimator after board because people generally board in a lot more spells against you. They board in um, certain removal spells. He, he, he doesn't know about Purify the Grave, but it's certainly reasonable if you can get a Purify the Grave. So I think, um, I think Sin Collector is actually not that bad for Mark to bring in in game two. Okay. Um, only other options here. I mean, seven of the bullet seems like it's okay. Again, if he's identified that he's playing it's a token deck. He needs the sever. Yeah, then yeah. he needs the sever. Uh, but it also has some other targets as well. I mean, destroying a vol or exiling a Royals, excuse me, is actually quite good. Yeah. Um, so. I think that one of is probably going to come in. Uh, Tristani, if we're going to go long, it certainly seems okay. Um, I don't love the Restoration Angel, you know, two Deathrite Shamans. He's got some options here yeah. that he can bring in. I mean, how much does he want to do with his main deck and change things is the question. That's the thing, because I think he has a lot of cards, like Deathrite Shaman's pretty good against Varls, you know. Uh, Restoration Angel, it's another way to block flyers and deal with flyers. Kelly's deck is a token deck if you're able to put him on it. So it's interesting, but again, how much does Mark really want to dilute his deck? His deck's pretty good against him game one. Do you really want to, um, you know, change what works for you? And does he even really know what he's playing against yet yeah. either? That's the big question because Costner hasn't revealed anything that says, hey, I am playing this deck and now you need to try to beat it. As he's going to play a turn two Lotless Troll off of that Godless Shrine and the Overgrown to and pass the turn back. Yeah, because even Lotless Troll, you don't really see Lotless Troll in a lot of token, junk token decks. Yeah. So um, Mark still could be a little confused as to what he's actually playing against. But I think in general, if you just take the road of, okay, this guy's just a black, green, white, good card deck, mm -hmm. you know, um, he more or less has an idea of what he needs to do against him. So a Farseeker from Nesico is going to allow him to find a Overgrown Tomb, but more importantly, be able to ramp up a little bit here, get to Thrag Tusk and Friends a little bit sooner, as Costner's going to draw his cards for the turn. He draws a Restoration Angel, and does have a third land in his hand, in the form of Temple Garden, which it looks like he may put into play, tapped or untapped this turn. But it looks like he is trying to figure out exactly what he wants to accomplish on his third turn of the game. Yeah, and, you know, a slightly better draw from Kelly this game. At least he's got a, 
a lot of troll in play. With with Varls, the, the card can be uh, pretty threatening. Um, you can discard a creature and then scavenge it and make it a pretty big trampler. Yeah. So, again, Lingering Souls would be a great draw here. Looks like, yep, there's the Lingering okay. Souls. So this is a card that you feel is pretty important in this matchup, and I'd like, we'll see. Yeah, we'll I see mean, exactly how big it is. I, I, I think turn three Lingering Souls, turn four Soren Emblem is just one of the best turns, you, the, the best sequence you, that deck can really have. Unfortunately, Mark has Lingering Souls of his own, uh, which is, you know, something that you haven't seen a lot of Junk Reanimator decks play lately. You know, it was obviously very popular early on, but people, I think Brian Brandewan kind of uh, pushed people away from that kind of strategy. Kelly does draw uh, Seven of the Bloodline, but which is kind of awkward because he would remove his own spirit token. Yeah. A card that we thought he would bring in, and he does bring in here, so I think, you know, at some point in this game, we're probably going to see that Seven of the Bloodline cast and have it be pretty good, but what it feels like to me right now, okay, so he does have a fourth land. It felt like for a moment there that he did not. But he does have a fourth land, and he does have a Sin Collector. So now we're going to go play the little information game. It is. And it's kind of awkward, because I think he had that Sin Collector the turn before, but he chose to play the Lingering Souls instead. If he played the Sin Collector first, he would have been able to get Mark's Lingering Souls, mm -hmm. which is a much better card in this situation. You, so, you um, see a hand of Isolated Chapel, Temple Garden, Restoration Angel, and Barrel Rites left over there for Nestico. And again, we know Kelly has a Restoration Angel in his hand, so he's going to be able to get that other Embarrow Rites. It's actually not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, the thing not about bad. Sin Collector, of course, is, you know, information is, is pivotal in Magic. So now, you know, if you're Costner and you've seen Nestico's hand, you're thinking, all right, like, this hand is definitely beatable. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to fade some draw steps if possible, but, you know, for what I know that he has right now, this hand is very, very beatable as Nestico's going to come across with two Spirit Tokens in the air, and these two players are going to race back and forth a little bit here. And we're going to get a flashback linger so from Mark. So Kelly can choose. So this can be, the next turn can be really great for Kelly. If he just passes back with four mana up, he might trick Nestico into attacking again, getting the Restoration Angel into play, blinking out his Sin Collector, and getting that last and burial rights. The, the thing that's kind of interesting here is um, for Costner, at the very back end of game one, he discarded a Restoration Angel to a lot with troll. So if you're Nestico and you were paying attention to that, you realize that Costner has in his deck. Also, by holding a Restoration Angel in your hand as Costner plays Academy Township, you may be thinking, why well, Restoration Angel in my green, black, white deck? Maybe he does too. Yeah. By playing the Gavany Township, if he doesn't activate it, then the gig jig is up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. At, at this point, I think you have to just activate. If, especially if, if Mark blocks the way he did or attempted to block. I think that if you don't activate, it's pretty obvious what you have. But it, I actually like activating there, though, simply because you don't need to get rid of the Umberio rights right now. He, he doesn't have any creatures in his graveyard. Even if he top decks a Grizzly Savage, he won't be able to cast Grizzly Savage and Umberio rights. So you can actually wait a turn to, to actually cast the Restoration Angel, but it looks like he was, just wants to do it in the draw step. Yeah, he's going to blink in the draw step. So on Braille Rights, going to bite the dust. The hand now is Isolated Chapel, Vault of the Archangel, Avacyn Pilgrim, and Restoration Angel. I see the thought process there be behind doing it in the draw step. You know, maybe you catch him. Maybe you catch a sorcery that you didn't know Nestico has in his deck after sideboard. Mm -hmm. At the very worst, you're going to get the Braille Rights that he doesn't know about. You're never going to catch the Grizzly Salvage off of that because it is an instant. Yeah. So now here's an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Nestico is going to play that Vault of the Archangel. And now, he, again, we're going to see what he could do game two, which is represent Vault of the Archangel moving forward. This game, it looks like he's going to be using it defensively well, instead of offensively. The Sever is actually great now because Kelly played it so he only has one to spirit token left, and he still has the Lingering Souls in his graveyard, so he forced Mark to flashback first, which allows the Sever to actually gain some value here. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So Sever of the Lion is going to take care of those spirits. It's also going to take care of Kelly's spirit, but he's going to clear the way for Lot with Troll, Sin Collector, and Restoration Angel and move into the red zone here. Ish. Probably just Lot with yeah. Troll, and so he chooses not to attack with Lot with Troll. He doesn't have any black up. Yeah. Knows about the Restoration Angel. And so passes the turn back. So Nestico, let's see what he can find. Again, the scary thing here for Casa, this has been the scary thing for the entire match, Joseph, is that Angel surrendering from Nestico at any point is the true backbreaker. Yeah. It's so difficult for his deck to be able to deal with. As you see Nestico kind of reaching here, but it's just going to come in with the Angel token and activate the Vault of the Archangel to gain some life. And Kelly does have the Sever of the Bloodline in his graveyard as a potential answer to it, but currently he only has five mana, so 
again, Angel Serenity coming down will uh, be a pretty good for Mark. But again, Mark doesn't have any creatures in his graveyard, so I, I, you know it's it's good, but it's not going to be game. It's not going to be game breaking like it was with, uh, in the last game. Yeah. So, Costa's Restoration is going to come across in the red zone, and again, no Gabby Thompson activation and nothing. I'm a little strange. Nothing doing with like the the Sim Collector or the Lot List rule. Yeah, I think you really, I, I don't think you want to play a, a long game here. I think you want to try to close this out as quickly as you can. Because again, Mark's deck is much more powerful in the late game. Now here's so, a Soren post combat. Wow. And now we're going to see a Vampire. And okay, so now there goes Lot Lush Roll. And, and that uh, means there was poor tapping involved. So it looks like the Soren comes down. And interesting that he chose to... Uh, so... It looks like he's going to be able to at least keep his Soren around for one turn. Decides to just make a vampire. With that Lingering Soul still in his graveyard, though, he really wants an emblem. Yeah. yeah. He could have gotten a lot more aggressive with his Soren. Yeah. It does change the way that Mexico has to play the game, because as you see, his Restoration Angel is going to go towards Soren Lord of Innistrad. But I, I kind of agree with you where, as, as you see, a Volta Dark Angel activation here from Nesco again, plays his Temple Garden as his last card, and fast to the turn back, where he really does want an emblem. Again, because he doesn't, he has no interest as Costner of playing a long game. Yeah, and not only that, if you make an emblem and no, don't attack with your Restoration Angel, you protect you, you protect your Soren for one turn because Restoration Angel can attack, you can block it. Yes, Mark can activate his vault to kill your Restoration Angel, but you also kill his Restoration Angel because you have an emblem. Yeah. So, and then you have an emblem in play, you have a Lingering Soul still in your graveyard, and you still have the Soren in play. And we can't so, forget about that game in Township either. Yeah, and it looks like Kelly drew another, it looks like Kelly drew another Lingering Souls here, so putting a, a lot of pressure on Mark right now. So Vampire and the Restoration Angel are going to come across. Nesco is going to take some damage. He's going to untap and draw. And let's see what he can find because it's about that time where it's we're almost the Angel Serenity or Bust territory. It looks like he drew an Ozid after the turn. No, I think it's a Grizzly Savage. Is it a Grizzly Savage? Yeah. So give him some cards to dig. So it looks like he's trying to... Yep, yep, so he has seven mana. So he has seven mana after the Grizzly Savage. If he draws an Angel Serenity, he can get into play. Three, four, and... Five. Farseek among them. You see a Fiend Hunter, oh. a Deathrite Shaman, which you don't see is Angel of Serenity in those top five cards. So decisions, decisions for Nestico. Yeah, not a not a great Grizzly Savage there. With no Umbaria rights even. It's uh he's basically can take out a restoration angel if he chooses, but you know beyond that, the Gavany Township Soren could end things pretty quickly here. As those cards are aching to do. <laughs> So now here is a Fiend Hunter, and I mean, targets are plentiful. I mean, do you shoot down a Spirit Token? Do you shoot down Restoration Angel? It is going to be Restoration Angel. Here and comes Restoration Angel and Abbas and Pilgrim, probably attempting to kill off Soren. Can't block fast enough, I think, if you're Costner. <laughs> it's saying, leave my Soren alone. Abbas and Pilgrim's going to trade with a Vampire. Costner's going to get a life off of that block, and the Spirit Token's going to bite the dust. So Costner gets to untap, knows Mexico has no cards in his hand, has to worry about basically only a fiend hunter right now so if if kelly just activates his gavany township and gets an emblem he can be doing 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 damage this turn yep so we see two three four five six six plus five is 11 yeah so it looks like that is what he will be doing so we have at least an emblem is he going to rock the township activation for what looks to be a lethal, a close to a lethal attack. I mean, Fiend Hunter would get in the way, it would die, Restoration Angel would come back. Yeah. But we're looking at what is close to a lethal attack, and now all the guys are? They are all plus one, plus one, plus zero currently. And they're he, all gonna come sideways. He did activate the Soren to get the answer. And it looks like Gavany Township will get activated. So now, get out your dice. So he's gonna gain three life off the Vampire, Restoration Angel comes back. Uh, actually, Restoration should be in play, correct? Yes. It's not Angel Serenity, so um, we will get that corrected. All of his creatures gain a plus one, plus one token. And I believe he deals 13. And then two, three, four from the Collector. Don't forget don't forget about our friend Restoration Angels. Well. And I don't think it wants to blink anything. I don't think it wants to blink anything either. <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it should put Nestico down. To two. Yeah, so even Angel Serenity here wouldn't be um, a good enough top deck. Yeah. And unfortunately, it is just an Absence Pilgrim anyway. Is Absence Pilgrim the one that we're looking for? 
and so, uh, we're gonna tie it up here between Costner and Estica. And it, you know, it just shows you, you know, the, the power of Soren and Lingering Souls in this matchup. Marth doesn't have that many flyers, so that's really one of the few ways that Kelly can, can win this game, is to just overwhelm the board with flyers and make them big enough that they're actually a significant threat. You see Costner there with the Dolphins, had a little more about Kelly here. He is from Miami. This is his hometown. So a hop, skip, and a jump away to come play the Grand Prix. Pretty nice. Nice, yeah. Pretty good feeling. Not bad. Well, top finishes, he's uh, playing some PTQs, won a Grand Prix trial or two, and, you know, just loves the game, loves to battle, and anytime your Grand Prix is in your hometown, it, it, it's it's a pretty good feeling. It, it really, to be able to sleep in your own bed the night before a Grand Prix, yeah. it's pretty great. Yeah. It's really great. I'm still hoping that we get more Grand Prix in New Jersey, <laughs> although you don't, can only hope. Don't hold your breath, yeah. buddy. Don't hold your breath. It's not as exotic a location as Miami. <laughs> when was the last Grand Prix in Jersey? Was it the was it the one in Tom's River? Uh, no. Maybe I think we had one. That? I think we might have had one before that. Okay. Although Philly, Philadelphia is pretty close to Jersey, so okay. that's not that bad. How far was that from you? About an hour. Oh, that's not so, bad. Yeah, it's not oh. bad. And Philly, uh, everyone loves the Philly location, Reading Terminal, great place to eat. So, uh, but Miami, you can't really complain about Miami considering the beach is roughly four blocks away right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to lie on the beach during my next break. That's good to know. Yeah, good it's pretty know. solid. Get the tan on. Yeah. That's all. So we didn't see Blood Baron uh, in Kelly's deck, but we did see the Sin Collector. So i um, not sure if he boarded in more Sin Collectors or whether he just didn't board out the two that he had in his main sure. deck. Um, again, Sin Collector, a lot better on the play out of Kelly's deck because it, it, it gives him the opportunity to actually get a Lingering Souls if Mark doesn't have his turn one Addison Pilgrim. Yeah. On the draw, not really sure Sin Collector is going to do much. Again, it looked great in that game because it got the Lingering uh, on Burial Rights. That was sort of an anomaly because Mark happened to have two Umbera rights in his opening hand. I don't think the Link Sin Collector is going to be as impressive um, in, in the later games. Yeah, it basically is just a two-one a lot of the time. I mean, you you, you saw for the, the majority of that game, it wasn't even attacking. Yeah, you know, it, was, it was literally just as you said, just a two-one that yeah it took Umbera rights out of his hand, which is certainly not relevant or excuse me, not irrelevant. Yeah, but wasn't a back-breaking effect. But, you know, maybe he, he saw the Lingering Souls. I, again, if you're on the play and you can get a Lingering Souls, that is huge. Yes. That's definitely a, a huge, especially for a deck like Junk Tokens. Yeah. On the draw, being able to catch the Lingering Souls is bordering, bordering on impossible between a deck that has, you know, a turn one mana accelerator in the form of, of Addison's Pilgrim and the fact that you know, he can just play it on turn three before you have yeah. three mana. And you don't have any mana in yeah. so you're not getting your Sin Collector out faster. Uh, I still like Blood Baron. I hope, I hope we see that out of Kelly's deck because I think that is a card that can be uh, pretty impressive. Um, again, it, it plows through Restoration Angels, it, uh, Angel Serenity, but you can't do anything about it. And as long as you have removal for cards, like and, it, and the Lingering Souls tokens can't block it either. So as long as you have a way to deal with Thrag Tusk, your, your Blood Baron can actually uh, lock up some games for you. So it looks like Mark is taking a mulligan down to six. Kelly appears to be happy with his seven card opener. And let's see if we have a solid keep here. Looks like we do. It's good. It looks like we've got a couple of lands and a far seat over there. Yeah, can't complain. Yeah. Solid hand. Off the, of Mulligan. Yeah, I and mean, the one thing that, you know, if you've ever watched or played Junk Reanimator at all, everyone knows it at this point, but this deck is a deck that Mulligans very well. Yeah, you don't need you don't need many cards to function. Yeah. Grizzly Savage and Barrier Rights, those are pretty much good enough. <laughs> Even on a land light hand, so. Uh, turn two far seat gets the uh, Godless Shrine, so Mark now has pretty much perfect mana. Has double white for uh, Fiend Hunter if he needs it. He also has the black for Grizzly Savage, Umbera Rights. So Kelly basically best turn two play here, probably Lotlet's Troll, I guess. Not many turn two options in his deck. Yeah, I mean, even if it is Lotlet's Troll, again, we saw in the last game where Kelly played a Lotlet's Troll on turn two, and I don't think it even like attacks. Yeah. So it looks like we just have a, a pass back. Kelly's pretty far behind here. If, if Mark's able to get a Thraktus down before Kelly's fourth land hits play, it's going to be pretty good position for Mark. And if you're Mark and you see nothing on turn one and turn two, you are absolutely yeah, thrilled. Yeah, you're ecstatic. You can't be happier. Here's a Mulch. Going to turn over a Sever the Bloodline, a Fiend Hunter, an Abrupt Decay, and a wow. Grizzly Salvage. So a miss, but a little bit of value there. The Fiend Hunter, the Graveyard to reanimate, and a Sever the Bloodline to flash back. A little, a little value, but you really need to start hitting, especially if you mulligan to six. So. Well, let's try again. 
here we go. We got two lands here, so it made up for a bit, uh, for, made up for it a little bit. Gets two lands here. Looks like he does have a Thrak Tusk in his hand, so he will be able to get that in the play. Does Kelly have the Lingering Souls? Is the real question, because again, Lingering Souls Soren doesn't matter how bad your turns one and two are. If your turns three and four are Lingering Souls Soren, it's still pretty good. Yeah, that'll turn the game around. So. Kelly may be thinking about, are we going to have the Lingering Souls Sync Collector debate like we did the turn before? Oh, we're just going to oh, see wow. a lot of Latrol and pass the turn back. So and I, I thought he had that the turn before. As did I. But it looked As like he I. maybe was afraid of Abrupt Decay, so decides to leave up a regeneration mana. But the one thing against, uh, the one thing as far as role assessment is concerned is, yes, you're a little bit scared, you like to leave up regeneration mana, but you do not want to go long. No. For animator, you have to try to get them dead as fast as you can or, or put on some sort of unique pressure on them that attacking from many different angles because by playing a lot with troll on turn three leaving regeneration hey what does mark care about a two ones it's exactly like, ah, i can't kill it but it's also not bigger than my thrag tusk yeah and fiend hunter can deal with it anyway mm -hmm. and you know your opponent mulligan so there's a good chance that they, they might not even have what the uh the reanimator decks don't play that many they don't play four copies of abrupt decay yeah. So, off of a mulligan and you're playing a random deck, there's a good chance he just doesn't have a removal spell for it. So, I would have just jammed it out there on turn two, probably. But here, it's going to be a pretty good hit for, for Kelly because he can block, regenerate, possibly discard a creature to actually deal with the Thracta. So, but no, it looks like he's just going to regenerate it, though. Doesn't want to discard any of its creatures. Cavern Soul is going to come in here for Nessica. We'll figure out what that's naming for you guys at home in just a moment. And it is naming Angel, not and the first time we've seen that before. So, it looks like he does have the Restoration Angel in his hand. Restoration Angel and Thraktus have been bringing people out of mulligans for years now. So, <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty solid uh, combination of cards there. So, here's a fifth land, and, and there's, there's a Soren. There's Soren. So, that's, a, that's what you could say is step one, as a Vampire Token is going to come into play. Unfortunately, the Restoration Angel will be dropping that Soren down to only one counter. So Mark Kelly will need to find an answer for that Resto Angel we'll pretty quickly. Grizzly Salvage, which is going to turn over five cards here. For Nestico, you see a Garrick Relentless among them. Also, Vault of the, Vault of the Archangel yet again showing up, and as long, along, excuse me, with the threat does. So, interesting choice here. I think, yeah, you just you pretty much need the threat. Vault is a great card, but I think you just want the threat there. And now Restoration is going to come down. Get you another beast, another five life, and a way to actually attack Soren. Yeah. At this point, you just want to get Soren off the table. That's all you care about. Yeah, just get Soren off. You you know how important it is for Kelly's deck. So here we have a draw. Oh, Angel Serenity! Wow, does he have a seventh mana? He does have plenty of white mana. Yes, and it he does. does have a seventh Are we going to see Angel Serenity come down here? I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't imagine not casting yeah. it. You got seven mana, Angel Serenity. You put that baby on the board. You can get a Restoration Angel of your own back. Yep. In your graveyard, yep. So Lawless Troll's gonna get eaten. I think it is. It is Restoration Angel and Fiend Hunter that I go underneath. Basically saying to Costner, I don't really care very much about your 1-1 one, one Vampire. That has almost no relevance to me. So it looks like he's casting Purify the Grave. Targeting uh, one of the creatures. Yeah, it's so the, the Restoration, Restoration Angel. Angel. But, you know, at the end of the day, that does not have a significant impact on the game. And that's one of the things with, with uh, when you're playing Chunk Reanimators is, you know, you board a lot of reactive cards against the deck, but, you know, what good reactive cards are there? Because you see Purify the Grave here, which, it can be awesome, but, again, that's someone who can just play a normal game, which is what he's done this game. Far-seeking, just playing like a rock deck. Yeah, that, and that's always been the struggle when you're playing against this Chunk Reanimator deck. You know, you can bring in cards like Tormund's Crypt, Purify the Grave, but they can still just cast all their value creatures, you know? Yeah. It's exactly what we saw this game. It doesn't really matter if you have Purify the Grave in your hand if your opponent is still blinking uh, Thraktus with Restoration Angels. Yeah. And that's exactly what's taking place this game for Nesico, is he is happy to untack. Costner does play a Thraktus of his own, but Nesico's board presence is pretty good. We know that he has another Thraktus in his hand. He just drew a mulch for the turn, so you see him reorganizing his mana. He's gonna lead off with that. So the top four cards are coming here. So he hits an Umbera Rites, and it looks like there's an Angel there too, but Kelly does have a Purify of the Grave, so yeah. he's going to stop those shenanigans at least for this turn. But uh, still, uh, dominating board presence by Mark right here. Attacks the Lost Creatures, and he's going to follow this up with a Thrag Tusk as well, so Kelly's really backpedaling right here. It's only going to get worse before it gets better for Costner. Yeah. 
Right. Red and Tusk are going to trade. Damage is going to resolve here after the dust is settled. We're going to add another 5-3 and gain five more life for Nesigo, pushing him up to a healthy 33. Yeah, and and Kelly's deck just isn't very good on defense. If he had a if he had a lingering if he had a Soren emblem in play, maybe it's a different story because suddenly your lingering souls become you know better blockers. But right now, his a token deck just isn't where you where you want to be if you're playing defense. A little surprised to see the Unburial Rights attempt there. As you had pointed out, Purify the Grave was at the ready. So I assumed that we were going to see a Thraxus join the party. Maybe, you know, Nestico looks like he may have just missed that. Purify the Grave was still down there in the graveyard. Gets that part of the game over with and just keeps moving forward. Yeah, I think you just want to keep uh, putting pressure on, you know, dropping your threats onto the board. We do have a Sever the Bloodline here, so it looks like that's going to deal with the Angel Serenity. And... Five mana being tapped. Oh, the five mana... Yeah. Hmm. So what is Costner up to this turn? He's taking a look around. Oh, Sigarda. Sigarda, host of Herons. Okay. So that is a pretty solid blocker. And it looks like... And Kelly does have a Vault of Archangels, so that could be pretty impressive right here. Well, Angel Serenity isn't scared, but the rest of the crew are. Yeah. So, you know, not playing that Thrag Tusk is, it could really hurt Mark right here because yep. he could have attacked for a lot of damage. Now... He can still attack with Angel Serenity, but he's not going to be able to attack with e enough to really uh, pr push lethal. And Sigarda is going to be able to swallow up that Restoration Angel if he attacks with it. So. And, and we also know that the one card that maybe Nesco could draw to in this situation, Vault of the Archangel, was uh, milled via Grizzly yes. Savage. So that's not coming back, and we're not able to draw to that one if you're Nestico. So Sigarda does have the potential to turn things around here. Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what Mark can do right here. It looks like... A lot of There's mana. the sever zone, so he gets rid of one blocker. Everything comes in. So the beast trade, restoration angel gets blocked, or is it restoration angel blocked? Or yeah, it looks like it, it, it's blocking something there, because the be the beasts are gonna trade. So he looks like he blocked. Yeah, he blocked, blocked the restoration, blocked restoration angel. angel. Okay. So yeah, he only drops Kelly to six. Not a bad position for Kelly right here. He can he can cast the Sever of the Bloodline of Zone on the Angel Serenity and play the Lotless Troll. He would only be getting a oh he, he'd be getting he'd be giving Mark a, a Fiend Hunter back. Yeah, which, which is you know a is, little bit scary. Yeah, but he can't target the Sigarda, so that's good. Let's yeah, see. Another option is he could just sever. He could sever. He could the sever the tokens, line. but yeah. I think he wants to deal with that five six. Otherwise, the Sigarda will never be able to attack. And, you know, Sigarda plus uh, Vault of Archangels is pretty good. So, yeah, it looks like he's going to get rid of it. And him, probably just... He could he could recast it or just pass the turn back. I think you kind of want to just pass here. Especially because you have a Purify the Grave in your hand. And you couldn't re you can't regenerate the Lala Troll anyway. I don't love the, the one thing that you, the one thing that you notice here, and, and we've seen this a little bit early in the in the in the day, is even though these three color decks have this great mana, see both players have all the mana in the world. The way that you tap your lands is very important because by not tapping the Vault of the Archangels this turn uh, to cast out several bloodline, Kelly is very uncomfortable playing Lot with Troll and not having access to Fear by the Grave. Yeah, game. he's a little loose with the way he's tapping his mana because uh, again, obviously Vault of Archangel does not need to be untapped in this situation. Yeah. Um, but let's see, it looks like Mark drew a Lingering Souls, which is pretty good. Gives him four power on the board. Um, only So Thrag Tusk can come into play, and we can also see a Lingering Souls flashback. So puts nine power on the board in one turn, so not a bad draw for Mark. Turns around things in a big way. So now you're going to see a 5-3 on the ground, five more life for Nestico. Four Spirit Tokens in the air, and that Beast Token as well. So a pretty big shift in a game that Costner was kind of beginning to stabilize a yeah. little bit. And and again, Mark, there is a uh, Sever the Bloodline in Kelly's graveyard, but by flashing it back, he basically forces Kelly to cast it, just because there's too much damage on the board. Um, so, I think, I kind of, I still like that play, even though you know that there's a Sever coming. So, with Kelly at six here, he can flashback Sever the Bloodline and cast he can cast the Lotless Troll, but that's just going to get Fiend Hunter anyway. It looks like he might have to... Yeah, I think he has to flashback Sever of the Bloodline and just pass. You end up going to one off a Thrag Tusk attack, but yeah. I think it's worth it. Just clear up the Spirit Tokens? Yeah, you got to get those Spirit Tokens off the board. You don't know if he has Gavney Township or anything like that. Yeah, you, know? you have no idea. You, 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 you like to have an idea, 
of, you know, you, you have an idea in your head of what the Junk Generator deck has, but again, Mexico's already exhibited that he has Walter the Archangel, a card that this deck doesn't often play. Yep. And so it's possible that he also has Gavity Township. Mexico's going to draw a card. It's a forest. So now he's looking at Forest Fiend Hunter. And so, then Costner has that Purify the Grave. So, again, pretty good shape here for Kelly. Mark's probably just going to attack with both. Oh, no, he's just going to attack with the Thraktos. I like this deck because yeah. there's no reason to throw away the Beast Token. Because mm -hmm. Sigarda's not going to trade with Thraktos at this yeah. point. I think he's comfortable going down, uh, as comfortable as you can be, going down to one life. And draws... That was a Blood Baron of the Scope. There we go. It's the card that I thought could be pretty impressive in this matchup. It's the, you can't Fiend Hunter it, that's you for sure. You cannot Fiend Hunter it. It looks like he doesn't have enough mana to actually activate the ball and cast Blood Baron, so... Yeah, it looks to be one short. And he just has the Purify... Is that a Purify? It looks yeah, like it might be Purify. Well. So a draw, Avacyn Pilgrim from Mark here. Looks like Thraktus can still come in. That'll trade with the Blood Baron, potentially. Yep. So immediately blocks with the Blood Baron. That's going to trade. It's going to knock Costner up to five. Going to give Mexico a Beast token. But now Sigarda is standing tall. And Sigarda plus... Vault of Archangels might be happening right now. It might, I think it might be worth it. And yeah, that was the question I was going to ask. You see him reaching really quickly. He's going to cast a Voice of Resurgence. Not a bad draw that turn either. It gives, it gives Costner a target for its Fiend Hunter. And now here's Lotro. So now he's comfortable playing both yeah. creatures. Yeah. And now, now I would, now I think you're okay swinging and acting. I want to get into this. Turn I, as I really well. want to get in. Yeah. But it looks like he might be just passing. He still has that Purify of the Grave in the hand, so maybe he's afraid of a top deck Grizzly Savage. Okay. So, it's not unreasonable to pass here and give yourself one turn to sort of set it up to make sure you don't lose the top decks. Temple Mark Garden, the just throws a Temple Garden, still has that Fiend Hunter in his hand. You see a, that little, bit of you see a little bit of frustration with that draw for this turn. There is your Fiend Hunter. Bye-bye goes Voice of Resurgence. But there are no good attacks here for Nestico, so Costner's going to untap. He's going to draw a card. Not quite sure what he found. The question is, is it time Is it time to start trying to turn the corner here with Sigarda plus a lifing activation again? I, I think you have to. You're not, your draws aren't... Nestico's draws are more powerful. I think you have to take a chance here. It's not, it's not even an unreasonable risk. Yeah. Unbarrel writes the draw. Which is, again, knowing that we have a Purifier of the Grave, not well, very... Well, Mark okay. doesn't know that, but he's, <laughs> I, I, I think he's about to. Mark probably thinking to himself, finally I drew a real card. And Costner's going to say, eh, not so much, my friend. Burial Rite's going to be cast here. And what are we targeting? And there comes your Yeah, it says, it doesn't matter what you're targeting. Get that out of my office. Yeah, with, with Nestico at 33, Kelly has to start attacking That's here. how I feel, too. I think There's just no... You're, 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 giving, you're giving Nestico too much time yeah, to draw out of this. 33 is the thing that really is, is, the, is the big factor, him being at 33 life. Is that a death right Shaman? That is a death right Shaman. All right. I still... I would... Now, and yeah. he passes again, I, this is... You're just giving Nestico too much time here. Thankfully, Nestico, thankfully for Kelly, Nestico just keeps drawing land. Yep. And you can see the frustrating, frustration kind of building here. So a flashback here from Barrel Rights. Going to target something that's going to get purified the grave on the flashback. Yep, and so he's going to pass the turn back again. And I, I, I want to see what's the draw step it's going to take for Costner to feel comfortable I, attacking. I think with an active Deathrite Shaman, I think now he might be comfortable attacking. Okay. I think... If you can if you can gain seven life this turn by activating Vault of Archangel and then activating Death Rite Shaman to gain two, I think you're probably thinking I'm comfortable enough that I'm not gonna die on the swing back. But uh, let's see what he does here. So it he's looks like reaching. we might get there. He's reaching. He's, he's doing some math. There it is. Alright, Cigar uh, coming Cigar sideways. Cigar coming over. Nope. Oh, oh no! <laughs> now he put the, oh, oh, he he put the brakes the, on. Wow. So maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he's afraid of right here, but Mark draws yet another I'm land. Mad. Eventually, Mark's going to stop drawing land, Kelly. you got to do something. So yeah, we're going to yeah, have you a... Got, I was going to say, you, gotta, he, you saw him reaching for Isolated Chapel. I, I think he's got to gain life. Yeah, so he he's gets two up to seven. Draws a card now. It's an Overgrown Tomb. At this point, you think... Yeah, so now we're going to finally gonna get a swing. Now he's going to attack. 
and are we going to see an activation of the vault? So attacking, I think it's step one that we agree with because he's got to get Nestico dead. But are we going to see a vault activation? And you see him reaching for mana two, three, yeah. and four. So we are going to see that. Tasha's going to go up to twelve. Nestico down to twenty-eight, and now he's going to try to turn the corner. Counting the draw steps here, because let's say virtually, I think maybe we agree that maybe Costner should have been attacking maybe two or three turns ago. So that's going to give potentially three extra draw steps for Nestico. Yeah. What is he able to find with those extra draw steps? Uh, at this point, he, he might have just gotten a little too land flooded at this point. I, Angel Serenity is still a solid draw here. Yes. Because Kelly won't really be able to do that much about it. Um, so I still think that Angel Serenity is reasonable. And he's at high enough life. Maybe Garrick. He's got a Restoration Angel here. Maybe Garrick, if you can deal with the Deathrite Shaman, it'll flip. Lock the Sigarda for a turn with your Restoration Angel, and then sacrifice your guy to search up an Angel Serenity. Sure. So Garrick might be a fine draw, especially since he has a Restoration Angel in his hand. So he actually has a way to protect it from Sigarda. So that's my Shaman activation. Not sure how many Garricks he poured it in, though. We saw one. Maybe he just has he's two. Got, he's got two to start. So he's got two. So maybe go. Garrick, Angel Serenity are probably reasonable draws. Let's see here. It looks like another land from Kelly. So is anything gonna? Is, is there anything that's gonna stop Costa from attacking? The answer right yeah. now is no. I don't think so. So he looks like he's fully committed to just doing this. So looks like they are currently on turn one of extra, extra turns. turns. All right. So here comes Restoration Angel coming down. That puts Nessico down to two. Oh, yet. there's Angel Serenity. We found Angel Serenity. So here we go. This is turn two, I believe. Yep. This is turn two of extra turns. Angel Serenity coming in, can't come into play fast enough. So we are definitely getting rid of those. Kelly's at, currently at 16. It looks like there's nothing to target with Angel in his graveyard. So Angel Serenity is going to be clearing the board. Mark can attack for 10, 11 damage this turn. Mark, a little bit of a fist pump there saying, finally. Finally, yeah. all these lands. Yeah, finally My Angel, Angel finally Serenity. shows up. So Angel's going to eat the Lotless Roll of Death Right Shaman. Here comes the Fiend Hunter. Here comes the Restoration Angel, Avacyn Pilgrim. And both Beast Tokens as well are coming across into the red zone here. No blockers here for Costner. He's got to take that one on the chin and untap if that's the turn back. And I have a feeling we might see Cigar to slow down a little bit as we move on yeah. to turn number three. So what do we draw turns. here? It looks like a Restoration Angel, possibly. So that's exact. Kelly just needed a creature to not lose pretty good draw there because he'd be able to cast a Restoration Angel and activate Vault of Archangel. So he's going to be able to survive this attack no matter what. So we're going to be moving into potentially a draw here in round number two? I, I suspect a it's going to be a draw, yes. It looks like Mark won't be able to put up enough pressure next turn, which will be turn three. Or turn four, rather. So we have a draw... Looks like it might be a threat to us. Now he's drawing all his threats. A little too late. <laughs> yeah. So, yep, everything comes in. Said, yeah, I'm attacking with all my creatures. I need to. I need to try to win. And uh, not going to be happy with this yep. card. Restoration Angel coming down. We're going to have a double block here. Yeah, see, a block with both of those angels and a, and a bulk of the Archangel activation is what you're going to see. So, he's going to take damage, but he'll also be gaining eight life yep. off the vault. So. I think he's in pretty safe shape of not dying this turn. So it looks like, yep, Restoration Angel will trade with Esther Angel Serenity, and Sigarda will block Mark's Restoration Angel. Yep. Down comes a Thrag Thrag close combat. So, yeah, it's basically saying, yep, we're drawing. Yep. Nothing else is going to happen here. So Kelly untaps for the turn. Yeah, Costner has turn number five. So you're calculating the damage after the dust settles. We'll have updated life totals for you here for you guys momentarily. But after the dust settles here, Costner's gonna untap. He draws an add for another worm. He draws a couple more cards. You see both players with the with the hands and the shoulders shrugging and all that stuff. But it looks like we are gonna be moving into a draw here. There's your death right shaman, there's your lot with troll. There's your advent of the worm. Yeah, and and honestly. I think if Kelly just played a little more more aggressively, even we're talking like turn two Lotless Troll yeah. instead of turn three Lotless Troll. Yep. If you're just playing a lot more aggressively, this never happens. I agree. I think I think the, Mark drew so badly in the middle of the game there 